Trumpet of the last few days. I'm Stanley Farrar. And I'm Robert Farrar. And I really chose a bad time to eat a cracker. And the one who's silent is Joshua Farrar. Alrighty. I I can speak now. Up until (laughs) I finish off the last half of that. I'm Joshua Farrar. Yeah. Totally on time. Definitely didn't mess it up myself. <laughs> Speaking about on time, they they've t- the time for or the appeals to the Supreme Court or have moved one step closer to making it to the Supreme Court. The chain of appeals continues. Yeah, I do find it interesting. You know, for a while, everyone was like, oh, he's losing all these court cases. We're not gonna, we're not gonna make it. But what they don't realize is that the battle has only just begun. This is kind of phase two now. Because the, the original idea people thought was to block certification. But it's that's not actually... The, the real fight begins after certification, when you try to block the certification that's already happened. <laughs> Well, that, those are all options, of course, but did anybody really believe that it wasn't going to end up going to the Supreme Court? I mean, there was a tiny little bit of hope that the courts wouldn't be totally corrupt, but it was... I mean, let's be honest, the courts were corrupt before this all started happening. They just are showing it more now. I was pretty certain it was going to go all the, the way. The whole government's corrupt. You'll see that's the problem, which is why we can't rely on the Supreme Court, because the whole government's corrupt. And the thing about it is, even if it goes to the Supreme Court and gets kicked to the Congress, they're corrupt. Yes, but they still... Well, the establishment doesn't want Trump in for the Republican Party, but the non-establishment groups do, and we don't know where the delegations would fall. I don't see them complaining about having a, uh, someone of their party back in office. But then again, half the Republican Party seems to be trying to oust President Trump. Well, all the establishment is. But the establishment Republican Party and the Democrat Party are essentially the same party. The biggest difference between the two is which individuals get power. That's about it. And the reason why they don't like Trump is because they can't control him. Mm -hmm. Because he wants to clean house on him, regardless of party. Well, there are many that believe that um, God put him in place to clean house. That's what QAnon is put it promoting. Yeah, I'm not sure I buy that. Historically speaking, in our congregation. historically speaking, God has had a very laissez-faire approach to human governments. I, I don't think that America is so mm. special to be the exception. He has actively put people on thrones before. Yeah, how many since the New Testament? It only talked about it in the Old Testament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. I don't think America is special that enough. Mean that it stopped happening. I, I don't think America in particular is that much different from the other countries that uh, we would require special attention from God for this particular purpose.
I'm going to disagree. Um, because the fact that that we are one of the last bastions of religious freedom in the world. The um, but our society's gotten so perverted and so corrupt. God may hand us over to a wicked government because of it. That's my thought. Yes, we're one of the last bastions of religious freedom in the world, but when has that ever stopped the church? Church thrives under persecution. Yeah. I don't think the country I've, we I've happen heard, to be I've in heard, is worth special attention. I've, I've heard several people talk about how they'd actually prefer that the that Christians were persecuted just because it'll drive out those who aren't really Christians and are trying to corrupt the church. It would definitely make and everything a little bit more black and white. I just have a hard time I just have a hard time wishing troubles on people. <laughs> Though it's coming anyway. It's going to happen. Yeah. Well, I figure we're going to be forced underground. It's just a matter of time. But, um... So, the... do we start the betting pool of who gets martyred first? <laughs> Probably the three of us are being so outspoken. <laughs> well, grab, grab a shovel. If you're going to be forced underground, you got to do it right. <laughs> if we were starting a betting pool over who would, who of the three of us would be martyred first, my money would be on Robert. <laughs> he's a, he's, he's freshly Roberts. made college enemies. Oh, so he's too uh, too new out of their indoctrination camp, uh, and so he's rebelled too quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's my mindset. And a failed experiment. Since I never went through their indoctrination camp, they don't really have their eyes on me. The only thing that would point in my direction is this show right here, and we've been extremely vague about most details involving us. It's not to say that someone very determined couldn't track me down, but they would have a much harder time uh, doing it. And as for Dad... You've been in the game so long that you know how to deal with it if uh, if they start trying to make maneuvers in order to trap you into an easy martyr. They would have to come at you with a mob, and let's be honest, you're not exactly in a good spot to get. <laughs> I'm rather Excuse difficult me, I to get. To, I need that to do something dogs. real quick. <laughs> they, they, they don't... They don't stop... But as Robert has the most vulnerabilities, my money would be on him being the first martyred. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I was young, I remember several that pre predicted that I would be uh, go through martyrdom. <laughs> what do you mean I have the most vulnerabilities? Well, let's see. You are fresh out of their indoctrination camps, so you under uh, so you know a majority of them currently, and a, and a great deal of them know you. Um, you're young, so you are more likely to become high profile, making it to where you're more likely to be a threat early on. You also actively work with a lot of people every day for the purpose of your job, making you easy to mob and kidnap and that sort of thing. Dad has none of those vulnerabilities, and I have very few of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, except for the fact that um, I stand in front of a congregation every uh, three times a week and am easy to find. You are easy to find. That does not make you easy to trap. They're not the same thing. <laughs> uh, 
I am just not easy but to find. But while we're on the subject <laughs> of religious, can we? While we're on the subject of religious freedom, can we talk about the SCOTUS case? Which case? Which one? Both the California SCOTUS and New York SCOTUS, but especially New York SCOTUS. Well, the Supreme, the SCOTUS case with New York. Oh, where they took and declared it unconstitutional for them to bar religious gatherings. Kind of. It's kind of a lukewarm victory from what I can tell, though. Because... Now, I hadn't heard about the California one. As far as I can tell, they didn't rule under a 1A argument. If they had of, then they could have barred the whole thing completely and let it never happen again. Instead, it seemed to be an equal protection clause argument. That's because they know that New York freedom of religion is dead. They couldn't possibly win New York on a first What did California basis. say? No, they couldn't in the federal courts. Yes, but I said they couldn't specifically win in New York on a First Amendment case because the First Amendment effectively doesn't exist in New York. Neither does the Second Amendment. Or a lot of the others. Well, no, but this was... This is... This is... This isn't the New York SCOTUS. This is SCOTUS SCOTUS. Oh, okay. Against New York. SCOTUS, for those of you okay. who uh, don't care for acronyms, is Supreme Court of the United States. And so every state has its own SCOTUS, and then there's the national SCOTUS. Just like POTUS is President of the United States. For all of you who now, don't you care take for the a, jargon being the... flung around. <laughs> if you take... Uh, recently, Texas versus California was argued before the Supreme Court. Then what was On Texas the grounds arguing that... California? The, it was arguing against the Obamacare. Stating that Obamacare was unconstitutional oh, and that the only part of, and according to the Supreme Court, the only part that had been and declared constitutional was their right to tax, and that was removed by Congress. Therefore, the whole, the whole law was now according to their own own dictates unconstitutional and therefore need to be declared unconstitutional and thrown out and California of course is arguing the other side of course but I mean this is the same state where there's where their Supreme Court said that it was freedom of speech for strippers to do their job Yes. Yeah. But it was okay to take and ban and gatherings in churches. Yes. Which is why I say that the New York the New York Supreme Court case it, it wasn't good because if strippers can get away with calling their craft free speech and get out of a lockdown then why do churches have to resort to equal the equal protection clause to get out of a lockdown that only kind of gets them out of it because the only reason they got out of it was because they were it was enforced more arbitrarily on them than it was on other places that were shut down well one thing about it is is that when it comes to uh, when the churches finally do get a spine and, and challenge Cal that, that they were uh, that California o opened up and and gave gave the strippers their uh, their ability to do their work 
under First Amendment grounds, and the First Amendment clearly states it's that uh, that the right of, of practicing religion cannot be infringed upon. So they've got a very strong grounds using the um, the dictates of the California Supreme Court. But of course, California loves dictatorship and hates religion, except, it, except for bars for some reason right now. Honestly, I'm more interested <laughs> in what's going on in Virginia, where around 90 counties declared themselves as sanctuary counties from the new gun laws and saying they will not be enforcing them. Yeah. Actually, in New York, there's 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 several counties that have declared that they will not be enforcing the New York state gun laws either, or federal gun laws if they if the um, if Biden starts ba uh, banning guns. <laughs> Which he can do. Well, he can restrict guns via the ATF without congressional approval. Chances are, with the way the presidency's been going just lately, on... he's just going to do an executive order and try to bypass even the Constitution. Mm -hmm. That might also have, yeah. But you know what they say, the quickest way to a revolution in the U.S., take away our guns. Or try to. Especially now that, now that more people are buying guns than ever in American history. <laughs> thing about it is, is okay i've heard uh, here's here's a group of arguments that i've heard the government's corrupt that uh, some believe that um trump was put in to fix it others believe he's incapable of fixing it i tend to fall in that latter group so some argue then then with it being irredeemable we should be supporting the anarchist and that but is if you a support the policy. anarchists supporting anarchists <laughs> creates a, a power vacuum which always leads to dictatorship after a short yes, period of mob rule it always leads to dictatorship um, and the loss of all freedoms mm -hmm. another uh, another thing is revol revolution well Revo uh, revolution you run into the same thing where who's going to be in charge after the revolution so you have to have a you have to have a well, power structure built in place to immediately take over over the old one like the previous american revolution did where they were ready yeah. because they were already self-governing they were just removing a foreign power from government so in this case we, you would need the individual a, a You'd need to either establish a replacement government or you would have to have all of the states fracture and rely entirely off of their uh, their state government. But if you do now, it wrong, you'll fall into one did, of two we, traps. We do know. Now, we're not arguing the fact that there was an oligarchy or dictatorship. My, uh, yeah, the, the two traps that I was mentioning is if you go... If you try to make pure democracy, you'll end up with mob rule and therefore dictatorship. And if you go a pure republic, you'll end up oligarchy, which is not very much different than dictatorship. We already are an oligarchy. We are now, yes. Republicanism naturally leads to oligarchy, in a sense, because oligarchy literally just means it's ruled by the, the kind of oligarchy you're talking about is more of a dictatorial oligarchy. Yes, that's exactly what I'm referring to. But the reason why the United States is a democratic republic, it's well, neither a democracy <clears throat> nor a republic, is it's designed with the idea, this has not always been purely executed properly, but the idea is that the democracy aspect will offset the oligarchy, and the oligarchy aspect will offset the democracy, ideally leading to a marriage of the two ideas to minimize corruption and make it last as long as possible without it that is the goal 
look you at still the box, gotta refresh it every now and the again. oligarchy and the oligarchy <laughs> it, the the oligarchy is using the democracy to undermine itself but at the same time securing its own power by fissuring itself into two different uh, parties and completely discrediting and removing any other parties from competing and then trying to remove the the yeah. last remaining competitor could we could we hypothetically <laughs> sue the DNC and RNC for antitrust hypothetically i think it could be done yes you wouldn't win but it, it could be done because they are they are they're monopolies that's what they are and they do aggressively try to stop other their parties it's kind of like barnes was saying it uh, the other day yesterday on viva fry he, he pointed out that um you take and try to start up a third party and then you have to take it to court to take and get on the ballot well and that when you go into uh, to uh, to it in the spring they tell you you know we can't you can't you have no standing because it's too early then when you take and try to do it in the summer they say you should have taken and filed earlier so you have no standing and then when it, the fall, fall comes around and you, you appeal they say well it's too late the ballots have already been pr uh, printed therefore you have no standing They, they've got it bottled up because they control the courts. Mm -hmm. no, Washington. Question is, which oligarchy? Or is it going to be both oligarchies that run this thing into the ground? Well, the, the well, reason... Corruption, the reason why we've lasted as long as we have is because the two individual major oligarchical powers keep each other in check in their constant war with each other. And usually, one, uh, one yeah, side is... they become basically the same thing. Yes, they're basically the same thing, but they're still, at, they're still more at war with each other than they are with any idea of actually progressing the nation. Which is a problem but also its own benefit because it means that they're too focused on each other to deal with anything. They're too focused on keeping each other in check so they don't have enough power to actually destroy everything right off the bat. If either side... No, gained... it leads to a slow stranglehold. <laughs> yeah. Additionally, if either side gets too much power over one side, then usually that the losing side is absorbed into another rising party which then becomes the next major power and they can and the war continues which it's not an ideal situation the thing about it is politics is currently speaking the democrat party is planning on using the courts to ensure that nobody can take their power away yeah they think they're finally posed for a decisive eternal victory which is what they've been fighting for all along mm -hmm. oh, of course that's that's the point <laughs> establish the democrat party make it a unitary system now yeah. we can in, well maybe not in law make it a unitary system in fact <laughs> the thing is is that to undo the to prevent corruption, you'd need term limits. Hard term limits, too. And... Hmm? Hard term limits, too. Not ones that can be bypassed. Yes. And, but, the, the, but the way our system is set up, the people voting for them would, have to, would be the ones who would be limited by them, and they're not going to do that. It's kind of like uh, und uh, correcting the tax uh, system. 
they're not going to fix the tax system because they're the ones that benefit from the power invested in the tax system. Yeah. It's kind of like in China. You know that China, they took and were taxing their people for the dams. Then after the dams um, were paid off, they changed the name of the tax and continued taxing them for the same dams. Mm-hmm. And have been for the last 10 years. That's no surprise. That's what Social Security became in they the United can't, States. Uh, so Social Security was originally corrupt. a uh, independent company where you uh, yeah. where you elected to pay into a system and they would invest your money for you basically at, with the agreement that they would pay you a certain amount back plus interest after the time period was over. It was like a uh, an evolution of the bank concept, but it was more like a trust fund. Um, the government basically stole social security at that uh, when, once they noticed it was profitable and they charge you for social security uh, they make sure that you don't get everything that you were paid back from it and they embezzle all the money into other programs it's just another tax well i would argue it was all i would argue it was always an embezzlement scheme oh yeah but because i would argue that most trust funds if are you look at when and, and life insurance when, for that matter When they t- took and set up the the plan for it, that they purposely set the age at an age that was older than what the people of the of the society were living at the time. Yeah, quite a bit higher than the national average, if I recall correctly. So they had no intention of paying. They just people started living longer. Yeah. Well, they didn't take into consideration is the reason why people were living so shortly was World War One and the Spanish flu. You know, interestingly enough, I'm not sure if I've brought this up before, but I found out some time ago that uh, for cryo-freeze companies, you know them, for, and for people who don't, it's a company where basically you pay in to have your your body frozen after your death so that it can be revived at a later date when science catches up. Um, these long shot schemes for yeah. people who are afraid of death. But the way they fund it is they basically have the individuals write their will out to the company so that they can use the money in your will to pay for your space, if you will, and, and the power used to, uh, to keep you frozen. Um, an interesting thing, though, that I found out was that to be on the board of directors in these companies, you have to have an invested interest in the company. So you have to either have you, you either have to have your personal will signed out to where all the money of, from your death goes to the company when you die and have your body frozen, or you have to have a direct relative who is actively frozen in the program. Which is an uh, interesting idea to offset corruption. Not a perfect one, but an interesting one. If they weren't, that if it is, wasn't just fairy dreams in the first place, yeah, it so you're just... saying we should freeze off? <laughs> so you're saying we should freeze all the congressmen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that uh, in order to hold office, you should have an invested interest in the way in the country functioning properly. Well, that's the reason why originally in the United States you didn't have the right to vote unless you owned property. Yeah. So the very notion that you didn't have any skin in the game didn't exist. But naturally, 
property tax didn't exist at that time. So this average standard citizen wasn't taxed. Mm -hmm. Actually, well, most of the money the coming into the government came in through way. tariffs. Yeah. That was the primary form. But you basically only paid taxes if you were a landowner or happened to be trading through a foreign country. Well, things that we tax for nowadays, schools, um, roads, fire, uh, fire department, police. During the 1700s, people voluntarily chose whether they would take and pay into it or not. Yeah. And if they chose not to, they didn't get the service. Yeah. Capitalism. The idea that everyone shouldn't be forced to do something they don't want to do. And I'm very in line with that line of thinking. As compared to socialism, where everyone is forced to do something they shouldn't, <laughs> they don't want. For the greater good. <laughs> so, yeah. so when it comes like down to it, if, if you didn't pay into the fire department, if you didn't pay into the fire department, the fire department didn't come out and put out your fire unless your neighbors who were paying into the fire department asked them to. To protect their own property. Which, I like that idea, to be honest. Now, wouldn't, that, wouldn't, that put a, wouldn't that put a new twist in the slumlords? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> As you know, they wouldn't pay in. Oh, of course not. <laughs> but it also means their slums wouldn't be around for very long either. <laughs> so if they, if they, if they let the two A go the way it was. Our American slums, well, the way it's supposed to be, American slums would be an entirely different place. Yeah. Well, you have to understand that uh, a lot of what we see in the fire department, it's, in, it's where everybody has to pay in with ta with our taxes, uh, is because of things like the Chicago fire. Started by a cow. A lamp gets knocked over. They think possibly. Oh, by the way, side note. They don't there know. There is an know. east side to Chicago. I have found it on a map. It is actually labeled as East Chicago. <laughs> that completely unrelated, okay. but relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's relevant to the night Chicago died. <laughs> well, when that, when that the fire point. got when they when they when Chicago burned, it burned to the river, and it burned the poorest section of town. Was it started by a cow, or was it started by the real estate investors that came in later? Hard to say. It's been too long. Nobody knows. Uh, uh, they, they blamed a cow for it. But many speculate that it couldn't have gotten that big if it had just been the, that fire. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's kind of like the Great London Fire. There's, there's they actually got started an, in the poorest section of London and burned all. There's actually an interesting discussion I've had multiple times because Europeans over here are f absolutely mind boggled by how far apart American houses are, usually. And uh, 
they, they kind of poke fun at us saying, you guys like your personal space too much. You're, even your houses like personal space. They can't be touching each other. I said, yeah, those, that's because of fire codes. That, that's solely there so the houses <laughs> don't spread fires. <laughs> <sighs> well, and well, throughout the ancient world, like their space. <laughs> well, throughout 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 history, they, you find that in the big cities, they build right on top of each other, and when they have a fire, everybody loses. Now, in the American Southwest, we're all spread out tremendous distances. If there's a fire. You, you lose your house, maybe your barn. But the neighbors don't lose their houses and barns. <laughs> I more find it mind-boggling that these people can tolerate being on top of each other so much. It's so compact and enclosed, there's no room to do anything. Maybe they the can't one, tolerate it. My favorite thing about rough. Italy, though... My absolute favorite thing about Italy is specifically in Sicily, they do not enforce traffic laws. You can pretty much do what you want. <laughs> if let's get back onto the subjects we were going to cover for a moment here. And and uh, for for an element of good news, Iran's leading nu uh, nuclear scientist is no longer with us. He got popped. Robert, would you like to share the details? He ran. He ran so far away. <laughs> well, that's the problem. Is I but never he couldn't get looked. away. <laughs> I never really looked very deep into the details. I know that the pro-war people... Well, okay. You've got the... The establishment is in America is not very happy about it. Let's just say that. Because they're pro-Iran for some reason. Maybe because Trump is anti-Iran. <laughs> but they're pro-war in everywhere else in the Middle East, just not Iran. Well, Biden's pro-Iran. For now. It'll well, be different once he's Iran the one who's hates responsible America, for bombing. And they hate America. But yeah. Yeah, like, like Josh said, it'll be different once he gets in, if he gets into office, because then and everyone knows they just pick fights and pick fights and pick fights. That's what the establishment does. Yeah. Thing about it is, is the establishment loves Iran because they're a totalitarian dictatorship and hate America. They hate America and want a totalitarian dictatorship here. They are, uh, Iran is what they want to be. Kind of like Venezuela. Or Cuba. I don't understand why somebody would want, would want to be the captain of a sinking ship. What I don't understand is why anybody would want to sink the ship that the captain of. So... Especially when they're not losing. <laughs> it's for, not falling into enemy hands. <laughs> for, for many politicians, the idea is that it doesn't matter how much damage we deal to the ship, because once we're captain, we can fix up any of it. And it's wrong. It's an intellectual fallacy, but it's one they possess. And they also have the mindset of, if I can't have it, no one can. Marx, Marx's favorite mentality right there. Yeah. If I can't have it, burn it all to the ground. And that is the Marxist way. It's, but with our so selfish society, where they all want their own way, somebody's going to be wanting to burn it down.
Well, though they believe, by the way, that it wasn't the U.S. that killed that nuclear scientist. They believe it was actually Israel. Which also recently, a purportedly, the Israeli troops have been told to prep for the U.S. to help them go to war with Iran. But the U.S. has issued conflicting reports about, well, has issued reports conflicting with that statement. Well, it's like um, they were preparing to, to defend our allies against China. But if Biden gets in there, if Biden's in, on China's payroll. So that you know they're not going to defend anybody against China. Well, Iran's the same way. Biden's in Iran's pocket just as much as he is China's. He's not going to, they don't view the Biden does not view Israel as our ally. He views Iran as, as our ally. And he if and and he doesn't view China as the enemy. He views is Japan and India as the enemy. Well, you know what's, what's really fascinating though? Is Israel's prepping for war against Iran. Armenia and, and Azerbaijan have gone to war. And India and China are going nose to nose with each other. It's almost like we are witnessing in real time the collapse of Pax Americana. In four years, Trump has managed to who effectively end America as the peacekeeping force of the world. And I'm not sure Biden can stop it. I hope he doesn't. Yeah, I, I think it's long past Obama time always... for America to cease being Obama. the world police. Mm -hmm. Obama always claimed that was his position, but he didn't live up to it. Quite the opposite, actually. No, he didn't. But Trump has lived up to it, and he is currently, even at, even right now, he's currently working on pulling troops out of the Middle East. Well, what that's leaving is a vacuum that needs to be filled, and that's great for us. That's great for the world, because if, if you've noticed, ever since America became the world's police, the... Basically, the world just stagnated under tyranny. There's no shift, no ebb and flow of boundaries. It's just politics, politics, politics. And those who are oppressed stay oppressed. Those who aren't oppressed, well, they stay in power if they are the oppressor. And those who aren't oppressed otherwise are pretty much American. <laughs> now, one alternative to what we were discussing earlier, that... I hadn't mentioned we could do like the Soviet Union and break up. Yes, we could. I'd rather it didn't happen. We're better as a as a whole. I I disagree. I think we could. I, I think there's a few I'm states sure we, we could do without. I think we could get rid of California. Yes, you can say California. And Oregon, I know. And Washington, and New York. And uh, I don't like seafood, so we'll just get rid of the entire northeast coast. <laughs> we can also get rid of Illinois. Um, Montana is basically just Canada anyway. <laughs> I'll have you know that montana happens to be a fairly conservative state i'm not being serious robert minnesota. <laughs> minnesota or michigan one minnesota uh, 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 minnesota's uh, little baghdad <laughs> the muslims have just about taken it over what about frostbite falls minnesota If it really existed, it'd probably be the last 
some bastion of hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Rocky's wit or Bowinkle's luck. Uh. <laughs> As for Michigan, when, when you take a look at Detroit our Detroit and world. Green, well, no, Green Bay is Wisconsin. I cut out Detroit. No, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit's Michigan. Yeah. The thing about it is, if you got rid of Chicago, Illinois would be all right. Yeah. Except their weather's not very nice. It. You so know, it's interesting. The Sierra Club, which is a leftist org, is a leftist organization that um, has been ever since the 60s or 70s been promoting the decimation of mankind to reduce the, the population of the world of, by two-thirds or more uh, and move everybody into cities what a nightmare yeah First place, if you're going to decimate, decimate society, it's the cities you should start with, not the country. <laughs> but it seems like the cities ruin everything they touch. The big yeah. ones, cities. It's the big cities that are promoting all these insane ideas that just won't function in the real world. But kind of like the Sahara Club's idea of moving everybody to the big cities, where on earth is the food supposed to come from? Are we going to be like one of those 1970s um, sci-fi movies where, Soylent where Green. everybody eats people? What is Soylent Green? It's people. <laughs> Not a but, very good um, movie, by the way. Uh, <laughs> now, for Christianity speaking, as far as Christianity is concerned, the devastation involved in a uh, utter an utter anarchist society where everything collapses would actually be very positive for Christianity. Well. Because people couldn't go to the government for help. Yeah. Well, I think we pretty much hit the ends of our subjects and we're na uh, nagging over a dead horse. Or living dogs in this particular case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Robert, you want to close us out? Thank you for watching today's episode. If you liked it, feel free to hit the like button. If you dislike it, feel free to hit the dislike button. Whatever you want. Also, feel free to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you can know whenever we drop a new episode. And feel free to leave a conspiracy theory down in the comments below. And if you want Josh us to start up a, uh, a splinter channel that is ASMR dog barking and cracker chewing, we can look into that too. <laughs> <laughs> but we really, really would rather not. <laughs> Until then, see you next time. <laughs>